Well, last month I made three videos on a simple timer uh, script. Uh, so I thought uh, I was done with that, but then someone asked in the comments how to do this. They wanted to know how to make a alarm timer that plays a sound. So we're gonna start from scratch here, create a whole new script. Let's go ahead and jump into that. So I'm just going to call it timer.sh. Uh, and I'm really quickly going to put in my own little uh, template here, which is basically just a header with copyright stuff and a main function. Uh, so let's go in here, let's go to the top and make some variables that we're gonna need. Uh, so first off, we're gonna need an alarm sound play. So we're gonna um, tell it where to look for that sound. We're gonna create a variable, I'll just call it alarm. And I will say that it's in my home directory and it will be a hidden file alarm uh, dot wave. And I'll tell you why I chose wave. And well, I'll tell you right now why I'm choosing a wave file over like an MP3 and it doesn't really matter. Uh, but uh, uh, normally when I do media stuff, I like using MPV back then. I like M player, MPV is kind of, I think a fork of that. MPV is awesome if you haven't used it. That's normally what I would use. Obviously I'm just gonna use the play function from Sox um, just because uh, I think it, it might be a little, little, little quicker. But, but uh, another reason is as you'll see as we move on that um, if we don't have a audio file like this, uh, Sox can generate tones. So that's why I'm using Sox, but Sox can't decode uh, MP3s. So that's why I'm using a WAV file. Uh, so here, next we're gonna say timer, or we'll call it time. And that will be the input that the user gives as an argument, so in seconds. Uh, we're not gonna get real fancy with this, at least not at this point, as far as like putting in like hours, minutes. It's just gonna be how many seconds you want till the alarm goes off. Um, maybe in the future, uh, we can look at modifying this to where you put a time. So right now I'm thinking of it as more of a, a stopwatch with an alarm that counts down, um, like an hourglass. Uh, but we could also look into creating one that waits for a certain time, but I, I probably won't bother doing that. Anyway, because you're better off using a program that already exists for that. Next, we're gonna say start, this is our start time. Now, last time I did something like this, which works date plus percent S inside our parentheses dollar sign there that runs this command and gives us the output for epoch time, which is time number of seconds since uh, 1970, January 1st, blah, blah, blah. Well, some of the comments point out something that I did not know. Let me go ahead and save this real quick. I'm gonna say echo dollar sign uh, seconds and look at what we get. So what is this? This is the number of seconds that the script has been running. Now you might be asking, why <clears throat> is my number so big? That's because we're running it in the shell here. Uh, and my shell has been open for a while. Uh, but in a script, it would give you a lower number. But it doesn't matter what the number is. It's just a matter of accurate timing that uh, it's been running. So uh, again, thank you to uh, the viewer who pointed this out. I wish I had his name in front of me. Uh, but check out my previous, my first video on uh, timer applications, and he's one of the first comments. Anyway, so instead of this, we're just going to say um, seconds. And so that would give us a starting time. I mean, it doesn't matter if for some reason we put this further down the script and um, the script's been running for a couple seconds. It's just a starting point. It's going to start when our script starts. So, and uh, now we are going to create a variable called s and set equal to one that we are going to change fairly quickly in our script, but we're going to, you know, check it first. So we're going to create it. Okay. So those are our main variables. Let's go to our welcome or our main function here. We say welcome. And uh, this is again, just a little template I have here. I'll leave that sleep because we're going to update our script every second. And we're just going to say while and we'll say while, and make sure you put these spaces here. Uh, Bash is very particular about spaces there and here. We're gonna say dollar sign S, which currently equals one. And we're gonna say as long as it's greater than zero, continue to loop. So we're gonna say do that, and then down here we'll say done, and up here we'll do this. And now we will check the current, the um, time given by the user and then sub, uh, subtract the seconds minus our start. Uh, so let me write that out real quick. And uh, as I said in the previous videos, 
out of habit, just because how I learned, I had been using uh, let to create integer variables. Uh, it seems like most people don't do that, and it seems a little bit cleaner to do it this way with the parentheses. So I'm trying to start doing that. We're going to say our time, uh, which is the number of seconds. So if I say 10, we'll say 10 seconds. And we're going to subtract, and then in parentheses here, because we want to subtract these two first, uh, seconds minus start. Okay, now, first off, all three of these are variables. You could write it like this with the dollar signs. I think that's what I did in the previous videos, but it turns out you don't need those dollar signs there when you're doing math like that, like this with variables. So what we wanna do is get, basically take our time, so let's say we say 10 seconds, and subtract how many seconds have passed from that to get our current countdown time. So if it's been five seconds, we want to subtract five from that 10. So this is a 10 that we initially get from the user. And then if we take our current time that our script has been running and subtract the time that the script started running up here, uh, then we're going to get uh, whatever that difference is. So we'll say five, if it's been five seconds, uh, and then we'll subtract that from 10. So we say, you know, five, S will be five. And that's why we're checking up here as long as s is greater than zero, we're going to continue. But once it hits zero, we're going to exit out of this loop and do something else. Uh, I know in the end, last time I did uh, the print function to clear the line. Uh, I'm just going to do it the way I originally did it, because this is how I know how to do it off the top of my head. Uh, I'm trying to think of the print. I don't use printf enough, and I should. Uh, but it doesn't matter. Here, we're going to say backslash r and we'll say uh, dollar sign s and we'll say seconds left. So what are we doing here? So the we're saying echo, we're saying do not print a new line at the end of this and the e is saying look for these special backslash characters and what these backslash characters are saying is go to the beginning of the line and start typing again. Uh, so if we say go to the beginning of the line and then put a bunch of spaces, we're basically clearing out the line. And then we're saying, again, go back to the beginning of the line. And then I go back to the beginning of the line here, so I do that twice, it doesn't really matter. And then we're going to print out what we want to print out. Actually, yeah, so let's just... Yeah, I'll leave that there. Anyway, and then we will sleep for one second. And let's go ahead and give that a quick try, okay? Got to make it executable, change mod plus X, the name of our script, just have to do that once on your system, make it executable. We'll run that, and it says zero seconds left. Why does it say that? Because we didn't give it a number. Let's go five. Now it's counting down five seconds. And when it gets to zero, it's going to exit out. Perfect. Uh, so there's an issue. If the user doesn't give an input, it's going to just start at zero. Or actually start at one and subtract from that. But let's go ahead and... Um, not sorry, one, but yeah, you know what I'm saying. Uh, I hope you know what I'm saying. I don't know what I'm saying. Let's go ahead and do a quick check up here. So we're going to say if space bracket space dollar sign pound, and then we're going to do dash LT dollar sign one, or no, just one. And we're going to say then if, and then we're going to say, we're going to give it some the user some information, echo, time needed in seconds, usage, dollar sign zero. Now, if you remember, dollar sign zero just gives you the name of the script. So it doesn't matter what you name the script, someone renames the script, it's going to print out the name of the script here. And then we'll say uh, seconds, uh, seconds. So that's usage, and then we'll give them an example. So we'll say example, dollar sign zero, and we'll say 10. And then we will exit one, because the script failed. Okay, now let's save that and run it again. If we don't give it a time, it's going to print out that message, give them a little bit of help. And if we give it a time, we'll say 10 seconds here, it's going to count down. Great. We're going to, I'm doing everything in the main function. Really, some of these things you can break up into different functions. You can have the main timer. You can have 
uh, the uh, user input check in a function. Usually I don't put that in a function just because I, I like having that at the top of the script before you get into the main function. Um, but we're just going to keep this simple. And after this, we're going to now echo out. And we're going to say dash E backslash N times up. Now, what's with the E and the backslash N? Well, because we don't, we have this no new line here because we're writing over the same line over and over again. If we didn't put this E and this backslash N, it would actually type this at the end of this line. Actually, let me go ahead and remove that and show you exactly uh, what that would do. Uh, we'll make this short, let's make it three seconds. And you'll see, it'll print it right there after left. And we don't want that. We want it on a new line. So we're going to say uh, dash n new line, not dash n, dash e. Dash n would say no new line at the end of this. And we do want a new line at the end of this. So let's go ahead and run our script for three seconds again. There we go, clear the screen. And now we want to play our sound. So we will say play and Sox has to be installed for this and that's something uh, we can look into you know checking if Sox is installed um, and well so if I just do this now I do have a wave file in my home directory called dot alarm wave uh, but we'll remove that later so you can see but we'll go ahead and run this welcome three seconds and if my volume is up oh, there we go Sorry, it's coming out my headphones. I had to switch my audio output. So it works. I can control C to stop that, or it will stop at the end of the audio file. It's just some random audio file I got off. But you get all this uh, playing of the output, blah, blah, blah. We don't want that showing up in our script. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the output of that, uh, so two greater than, and we're just going to dump that into dev null. Perfect. Now we'll run it again. Great, I control C that. Looking good. I don't know why I indented it like that. Okay, but what if our wave file doesn't exist? We want to check for that. So we're going to say if, and here we're going to say dash F, and we're going to say dollar sign alarm, which again, remember is up here near the top of our script is saying it's a hidden file in your home directory called alarm.wave. So uh, you can always just change it in the one spot up there if you want to change where your alarm file is saved. Then, and then we will uh, say else, because otherwise your script will not play the sound. The socks will give you an error, but you won't see it because you're dumping all the dev null, so that it won't get an alarm sound. Um, so at this point, I'm going to copy and paste something from my notes here. <laughs> this is actually something I've been meaning to do tutorials on, uh, generating synthesized sounds in a shell script. Um, but basically, this is going to play a chord, and the chord it's going to play is a C chord, and uh, I'm not going to explain all this. We're dumping again to dev null. So basically, if our alarm sound does not exist, it is going to play that chord. Let's see. Uh, so we'll do it once with our alarm wave sound. Okay, kill that. Uh, now I'll remove my alarm wave sound and if we run our script again this time, So it played a, a chord. And you can actually write out full songs like this, um, which we're not going to do. Um, and that's just a basic chord there. Uh, but what we can also do is it only plays that chord once. Uh, it fades in, fades out based on our parameters here. And it's as long as I tell it to be. But let's go ahead and just put this in, uh, we'll take four I in, I think would be a, a good way to do this. And I'll say one, two, three, uh, do. And then I'll say done. Now it should play that chord three times in a row. There might be a more elegant way to do that. Let's go ahead and start.
And that is it. Our uh, basic timer alarm script is complete. Um, obviously, there's more things we can do, and uh, but this is a very basic script here. Uh, gives the user output uh, if they don't enter a time. Uh, we didn't really do anything if they give you something other than a numeric value. I'm not even sure what would happen there. Let's go ahead and just say it probably will just go to zero. Yeah. So that was interesting. Um, we could look into adding a check for that in the future, um, but we have we have a pretty good script here. It, it should keep some accurate timing. Uh, it updates every second, you know. So you're not going to want to use this for like a stopwatch thing because because we are using the sleep command to check. So if it's running slow during the countdown, it's not a problem. But if it ran slow right at time when it was supposed to go off, or even it's checking every second, um, it's not going to be exactly falling on the correct second when it plays the alarm. Uh, but it's going to be within a second, as long as your computer's not jacked up. Um, but we also have it to where it's playing a WAV file. But if that WAV file doesn't exist, it defaults to playing a synth uh, that it's going to generate on the fly. Uh, which again, you can change all this. So let's go ahead and like make that a 2 there. And now... That sounded pretty much the same. <coughs> um, put that back to 1. Again... Uh, I've been meaning to do a tutorial on synth stuff like this. We're playing chords here. These are the notes we're playing, the type of wave sign we're playing, uh, blah, 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 the fade in, how long to hold, fade out, all that stuff. Um, but I think uh, for 15 minutes or so of typing, we've got a pretty good little script here. I will try to remember to put a link in the description of this video to the script up on Pastebin. I do thank you for watching. And as always, I hope that you have a great day. Please visit filmsbychris.com. Chris with a K, there's a link in the description there. You can search through all my videos on both my channels. And if you like my videos, be sure to like, share, subscribe, comment, and also check out my Patreon page. Again, there's a link for that in the description and on my website. You can also support me through uh, PayPal if you would like. But I really do appreciate any support I can get from viewers. Uh, and I hope you have a great day.